Good evening. Welcome to the Scarborough Board of Education meeting. Today is Thursday, September 4th, 2014. May I please have the attendance? Mrs. Bealey? Here. Mrs. Chiazzo? Here. Mrs. Lane? Here. Mrs. Massengill? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Mrs. Perry? Here. Mrs. Shea? Here. Ms. Murray? I think she's playing field hockey this evening. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. Would you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, and let me begin by saying this evening that uh, the meeting began at 6.30, well, not quite, 6.45, yeah, for the school board to go into an executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA, section 4056D, to discuss the bargaining contracts between the board and the Scarborough Education Support Professionals and the Scarborough Bus Drivers, and we are now coming into public session. So welcome to all of those in the audience this evening. And do we have any adjustments this evening to the agenda? I think the adjustments uh, that have been made are ones that uh, you've received. There's some additional appointments on item 8, um, 8.4. You had two middle school um, appointments. There are an additional five appointments. As you see, um, uh, high school, middle school, Wentworth, primary, and uh, K-8. So we'll be covering... Uh, those new items 8.4.3 all the way through 8.4.7. Okay. I I have to detail those. I have an extra. Just want it. Okay. Okay. No, I printed it. All right. Okay. Um, so is that the only adjustment? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. So this evening, the superintendent's report. Um, I thought a great topic for tonight would be the opening of school, and I have some reports I'd like to share with you. I'll go by phase. <coughs> uh, these are fairly brief. Um, the K-2 opening, uh, everything is working well as school began. Uh, Pleasant Hill and Blue Point, as you know, share a principal, Kelly Mullen-Martin, who's assisted um, capably by Ann Cass this year, and Ann Lovejoy continues at eight corners. The K-2 leadership or sc uh, school leadership team reports that all three schools opened with enthusiasm and energy, which I can only imagine. Um, it is always great to watch the students arrive with parents or on buses and be met with welcoming smiles by their, by, by their teachers and other students, their friends that they haven't seen all summer. Um, kindergartners are learning the ways of being at school and the hallways are, this is their description, festooned with Creative bulletin boards welcoming students. Uh, classroom energy is high despite the muggy beginning, and everyone is anticipating a wonderful year. So that's a nice positive report from K2. We um, as well have a report from uh, Wentworth, and, um, and I know that Joanne and I and perhaps others were there. It was a great opening for the new uh, Wentworth school. It actually became a school uh, with that opening. It was extraordinary. Um, they report it was wonderful to see students' faces so full of anticipation and wonder as they entered the beautiful new building for the first time. At that moment, it felt like the building truly became a school, and that was a very cool experience for all of us who were there. Uh, this was Discovery Week at Wentworth, um, which is Discover the School. Uh, students and staff enjoyed navigating the school and seeing all that it has to offer. Children had a chance to meet their allied arts teachers and enjoy art, uh, singing the school song, uh, PE games, and uh, talk with their student advocate. They absolutely love their new playground and cafeteria with its round tables. They love their shiny lockers, for sure. <laughs> uh, we want to thank public safety uh, for keeping everyone safe um, mornings and afternoons. We also appreciate the amazing work of Todd Jepson and his staff for their support. Uh, the faculty at uh, Wentworth and staff have worked tremendously uh, hard to prepare Wentworth for the arrival of the 740 children who did arrive and uh, everyone did a great job. Finally, we should all be proud of the students of Wentworth who have been extraordinarily respectful. From the voters of Scarborough who approved the project, the engineers, and many contractors who designed and built the physical structure, to the steering and building committees who worked collaboratively for years to guide the process, central office, custodial office, K-2 
kitchen maintenance staff and our own school staff, um, they are saying that we offer our most sincere thank you for making this dream a reality. With our students in place, we've officially opened Wentworth School. It's truly beyond our ex expectations. Thank you for the role you've played and continue to play in Scarborough Public Schools. We look forward to a wonderful year of learning and opportunity. And that was uh, basically from Kelly and John. Uh, just a reminder, on the 23rd of September, Open House will be held for Green and Blue le Learning Communities. That's at 5 p.m. And on the 24th of September, Open House Red and Purple Learning Communities at 5 p.m. And I believe um, that I have a um, family newsletter. I don't know that this has been fully distributed yet, so you may be seeing an advanced copy of this. But it's got some great... Um, photos, and I'm going to pass these down to you. And Mrs. Sizemore is going to pick up from here and talk a little bit more um, about some of the important updates with, uh, with Wentworth. Okay. It was a um, wonderful moment to be there for the opening. Uh, everything ran so smoothly. Uh, the bus loop, all the buses came in. Our children were safe as they were getting off the buses onto the school uh, grounds. Um, the opening day began with uh, Mrs. Crosby uh, welcoming everyone and then the uh, raising of the flag that they brought over from the old school to officially start the Wentworth School opening. And then the students walked into the new building. Um, the, it's just a wonderful building. It's going to create learning opportunities for our students and for our teachers that um, is really going to put our kids ahead um, in, in their learning. And so I'm very excited to see uh, what's going to happen. Um, the technology that is in there has really, it is going to transform how kids learn and how teachers teach. It already started with the um, teachers having uh, workshops on how to use the Eno boards. And as I walked around the school just yesterday and today, teachers starting to use the Eno boards and realizing the, the possibilities are endless in what they can do and how excited the kids are to see this kind of technology and, and uh, for their learning. Um, with that kind of technology, and uh, there were 76 Eno boards, 84 projectors that were in there. They have document cameras. Um, there's laptops. Every student um, will be using a laptop. And uh, the benefits of that, um, our kids learn differently today. I mean, you take a three-year-old and you should give them your iPhone and they know what to do to get to where they want to be on it, many of them. So we're very excited for the opportunities that uh, will continue to grow there. One of the things that I was very passionate about, too, um, in the building project four years ago was making sure that the climate control of the building was, uh, was done because in um, working at the middle school for all those years and it was air conditioned and the data that we had collected that over 20 days of learning were accomplished uh, more than the other schools because of the climate, because of the climate control in the building. Um, the kids yesterday and the day before it was hot. You would have never known that. They were, they were en enthusiastic. They were willing to work. You know, a lot of times in a hot building when it's uh, 85 degrees, uh, it's not something that people want to be in. And I had that opportunity by being on the second floor of the high school um, for a meeting for over an hour and a half, and I thought, oh, my goodness, it must be 85, 90 degrees in here, and there's no air. So um, I'm very happy to say that the cooling system at uh, Wentworth works very well. Um, it is keeping the building comfortable, and that is a true testament to the building commissioning process that we did um, so that our mechanical, electrical, and uh, subcontractors all tested it out before the kids went into the building. Uh, we're still working through the punch list of some little things with some furniture things, but it's being worked out. Um, the playground is fantastic. The kids are just thrilled with that playground. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, to see them go out onto the playground and to use that equipment <coughs> is it, just really uh, very, very touching. So um, I can't speak enough about the wonderful things of Wentworth, and I truly thank uh, the community for this opportunity for the students today and for the future for uh, 
this learning opportunity. And Kelly has some um, new opening days at Wentworth. Uh, as you can see, the kids are getting off the bus and there's teachers with their signs so the kids can find their teacher. And then there's all the kids lined up. I'd like to note again that the children were part of the selection of the playground equipment. And uh, I think Mrs. Uh, Murphy's daughters were involved in that process. All three of them were. All three of my kids. Yes, Arthur. That's it. So the opening of Wentworth was, was, it was really fun. It was very exciting. Um, uh, Kelly uh, Crosby and John Thurlow did an extraordinary job. It was, some, as I walked up, one of the teachers said, this is running like a well-oiled machine. And I said, well, with the two that are running the show, I understand um, and would expect really nothing less. So we also had um, a great opening over at the middle school. Uh, they had a successful opening of the new school year. The numbers have grown over there up to 800, or actually 800 plus students. Students and staff ex experienced many organizational shifts upon their return that had been um, planned uh, actually for the couple of preceding years. Staff are uh, collaboratively navigating the minor bumps in the road as they work through the many changes in the way that uh, business is happening over there at the middle school. One of the changes is in the cafeteria. For the first time, students are able to eat lunch with their grade level peers. And I think they're pretty happy about that. Um, this rather large undertaking went very smoothly due to a collaborative staff and, uh, will and staff and willingness of the students to meet the challenge. The climate has been extremely positive uh, throughout the school community at the middle school. I was over there visiting. Uh, they had just uh, had their first connections uh, meeting, which was, which was terrific, um, and so a great start at the middle school. And then last but not least, in terms of the high school, during the first week, Wednesday was uh, freshman and new student orientation, which began with the breakfast that was provided by Scarborough High School, um, followed by activities that allowed the freshmen and new students to meet their teachers, attend classes, and become comfortable with the layout of the high school. Uh, they got to hear some opportunities that they have for them at that high school, um, understand the network of support that's in place, and navigate the school day schedule without the other school, without the other um, students uh, in grades uh, 10 through 12 um, in the school. So that was um, a great opportunity. Uh, on Thursday, when uh, all students arrived, they began the day with the senior class parading from the senior parking lot um, in their class of 2015 t-shirts to the cafeteria with a project graduation sponsored breakfast. Throughout the day, students had their photo ID uh, pictures taken and the day was ended with senior class walking to Memorial Park for their senior picture. So they, the senior activities have started even on the first day. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we want them thinking about the end of school, but uh, current week. Uh, this week, uh, they're focused on getting students and staff into their normal schedule and routine. They've spent a good amount of time practicing emergency procedures, and David Creech is, is very, um, very strong in terms of ensuring that those, pla th those are in place. Uh, there were class meetings held to provide students with information to help them be successful this year and to understand the network of support that they have in place for them. Uh, all in all, Scarborough High School is off as well to a great start. Mrs. Sizemore, do you have any more? Or? No. Okay, that's our report. All right, well, thank <coughs> you so much. Okay, so the chair report this evening, I'm really going to do a report out on our board retreat that occurred this afternoon over at the new Wentworth School. So um, a couple of our board members had not had the opportunity to be in the building until earlier this evening. So they had a quick nickel tour. Um, didn't have a lot of time, but hopefully you'll get back in there again soon. So um, we discussed uh, top 10 priorities um, to our budget preparation, working with the town council and the school finance committees together, starting our discussions with them earlier. So we're already going to be meeting in the middle of September at a joint um, meeting with them. And we're discussing our communication strategies and development of all of the things that we are trying to change and improve upon. Uh, we will be, Kelly was nice enough while we were having our executive session to print up the open house schedule.
so I'll scan it and get it out to everyone. And if everybody could please sign up for a time. We're going to have um, a board member at each one of the open houses again this year. We did it last year. Our main purpose uh, is to actually ask people as they come in to tour the school with their students to please uh, give us their email address so we can add you to our list so that we can send out information to you on what's going on at the school board level. Um, it's certainly helpful to disseminate some of that information in that manner. We can't borrow someone else's list. Um, we're building our own. So we have a number of signatures and email addresses from last year. We're looking to add more. Please, please, please uh, sign up so that you can get the information so that you're not hearing things out in the public that might not be what is uh, factual, correct, true, and we're happy to answer questions. Email us. Our email addresses are all on the website. Take an opportunity, um, a moment to go view the new Scarborough Schools website. It's scarboroughschools.org. And um, take a look at that. Uh, everything's on there. It's uh, a, pro a work in process at the moment. Um, there are some things that have not appeared yet, um, trying to work through all those things. So. Um, we did discuss our school board goals and objectives. Everyone will receive a draft after we made our changes. Um, eventually that will be available for the public as well. Um, we're still sticking with our kids first goals, um, you know, to advocate for the students of Scarborough, um, both financially and in every other way that we possibly can. So that is it for us this evening. Oh, no, one more thing, sorry. September 30th is the out in Gorham, is that right? The Gorham, Gorham, Gorham um, Middle School. The middle school is hosting a candidates, candidates night. night for state candidates. So it's not the local candidates night. So um, five, I think it was 530. Five, five? Six, 630 to 730. 630 to 730. Thank you. 630 to 730 in Gorham. Um, so. Most of us will be in attendance. Uh, those that can't attend, well, we can give you a report out on that. So uh, That's it for me this evening. We do not have a student representative this evening, though we do have one in the audience who is contemplating becoming the new student representative. So I'd like to say hello to Emma Hartle over there. Um, she's a junior at the high school this year, so it would be nice to see Emma join our board if she so desires. So if you have any questions for any one of the board members, we'd be happy to answer them for you. I'm certain that maybe you've met with Chris, Chris, Kristen and she's talked to you about that. So um, we're happy to do that. So we hope that you decide to join us. We think you'd be a welcome addition. So, um, And that's it for me. Oh. Just a note um, you may wish to mention, um, or I'll mention it, that uh, we have our first late start, and it's happening on the 10th. Which is next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. And it goes according to the same schedule as how our late starts ran. The second, is that the second Wednesday ahead? of every month, with the exception of the month of June, right. which would be the first Monday of the month. The first Wednesday. I'm sorry, the first Wednesday of the month. So double check that. The schedule is there. It's, it's on the on website. It's on the check website. Check out our new website and the, the schedule is there. The calendar on the new website is, is amazing because mm -hmm. you can download it right to your electronic mm -hmm. calendar. You choose what things you want entered and it slides there like magic. Wow. Yep. All right. Perfect. <coughs> okay. So that's it for that. Um, new business, 8.0. We have the minutes of August 14, 2014. Approval, oh, approval as printed. Second. Questions, comments, discussion? I will say that I will not be voting on this. I was not at the August 14th meeting. All in favor of approval as presented? Six. Thank you very much. All right. And next we have 8.2, motion to approve the 2014 to 2017 bargaining contract of the Scarborough Educational Support Staff. Move approval. Second. All right. I'll let Jackie. Yes. Uh, I want to thank uh, Justin Stebbins, president of the Scarborough Education Association and his negotiators, uh, for the professional manner in which they conducted negotiations and their preparedness for each session.
thank you to our team, Kelly Murphy and Christine Mazigal and, and Mrs. Sizemore, for their support and participation <coughs> and engaging of, of the negotiations team. Uh, each side represented their constituency very <coughs> well. I want to make a note. I want it in the record. We still pay, pay our employees less than those in South Portland, Cape Elizabeth, Falmouth, Gorham. And we're pretty close on a par uh, with Westbrook. So although our employees will be receiving a raise, it is certainly not at the level that is being paid in other communities. With regards to uh, the, the support professionals, uh, they have given up their longevity pay in favor of wage increase. They have agreed, as have our other bargaining units, to have their spouse take employee insurance if they are employed elsewhere. They have agreed to look at the, that more options that are being offered uh, by the health plan. They will uh, participate in the health insurance study committee. Uh, they will receive a 2% wage for the current <coughs> year and then they will receive uh, 2.5 and 2.5 for subsequent years. There are, what, about 130 employees? Yeah, 130, 150. Between 130 and 150 employees from EdTech ones to uh, secretaries to the medical support staff in this unit. We're very lucky to have them. All right. Questions? Anybody? Question? No. Okay. All in favor of approval as presented? Seven. So moved. Um, thank you for the hard work on that contract. Again, happy that we've closed another one. Uh, 8.3, we have a motion to approve the July 1st, 2014 to June 30th, 2017 bargaining contract of the Scarborough bus drivers. Move approval. Second. Okay. Jackie? Yes. Uh, was, uh, the accolades that I gave to Justin Stebbins and the negotiation team for the support professionals uh, holds true also for the bus drivers. Uh, one of the things that the bus drivers agreed with us on was the no longer the use of vacation time during school days. Uh, they agreed to the same health insurance uh, plans as we have negotiated with other groups. They agreed to adjusted vacation days for new hires, and their salary agreement calls for 2%, 2%, and 2.5. And I would like to note that in the same vein as with the support staff and our teachers' contracts, uh, they are not paid in the same categories as surrounding towns, and we are finding it increasingly more difficult uh, to hire competent uh, bus drivers. Any questions? Can we come in? Uh, sure. Okay. Um, I think uh, during the you know budget discussion, a lot of people talk about you know we. Majority, you know, we as we know, majority of our school budget is spent on these fixed costs of you know the contract and obligations. And the people who would say, you know, what contract can be renegotiated? I want to say to the taxpayer out there that these our negotiating team are great, and our staff and the bus driver can see every single of the contract. Even so, you see the very small increases in the pay. However, they are giving concessions. You know, we are not paying, you know, our staff or teachers or anybody higher than the market. Um, you know, even medium kind of 
average rate, you see, um, but we have to pay them at a competitive, you know, people willing to work in our district. So if we want to good keep employee here, that said, so I think we, you know, need to realize the. We are doing the best we can here. From the contract I have seen, all the several new contracts, you know, Jackie and the negotiation team have negotiated. And the, um, so when the contract time comes in, this is, uh, these are going to be there and it's going to be fixed and not negotiable anymore. So we have to take it as, as it is. And uh, so what's left is going to be very small portion of our program f um, budget. And, and our employees are are giving, you know. The, the, I think that I want to thank the uh, Scarborough Education Association and their, you know, their the teachers or the staff really are do, <coughs> giving um, working, you know, working in a situation that they can move to some. I mean, they are giving concessions. Consider what we you know have here, and they not must not the job, and not must not the working environment to be here. So I, um, that's uh, I just want to you know let the taxpayer know this is um, you know this this is going to be carried on for the next couple of years, and we we are doing a great job in terms of that kind of um, this, um, budget spending. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Then all in favor of approval of the Scarborough bus driver's contract as presented? Seven. Thank you very much. Um, next we have appointments, 8.4, and we have obviously some additions there that Dr. Entwistle <coughs> mentioned that everybody had received. So I will turn it over to Dr. Entwistle then. Okay. Um, we'll start with item 8.4.1. This is an appointment of a middle school social studies teacher. Uh, this is a recommendation to um, have uh, Jacob Brown uh, fill the position, and this was a position that was created by resignation. Mr. Brown is a recent graduate from St. Joe's College where he received a bachelor's degree in history. He also completed his student teaching here at Scarborough Middle School this past spring, uh, working with students in sixth grade and eighth grade social studies classes. The recommendation is to appoint uh, Jacob Brown as middle school social studies teacher. So moved. Second. Any questions? All in favor of approval? I'm sorry. Sorry, Doctor, just a quick question. Yep. You've got, um, the position was created by a resignation, but it's only a one year position. Is, is this a, a temporary fill or is it just the positions only open for one year and then? There's, be, there's be, uh, been some movement of teaching assignments, so as it turns out, this is uh, just a one year appointment. Mrs. Hathorne <laughs> will now clarify <laughs> and actually <laughs> tell you the real <laughs> answer, Mr. Chiazzo. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Dr. Entwistle. It's because it happened so quickly quickly at the end of the year, at the beginning of the year. We had a week to hire someone, so we couldn't really open it up and do the best job we could do. Although this is a great, great candidate. So just to be clear, the position is open full time, but we've only appointed him for one year. One and year. The and we will be reevaluated we'll, next year. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. So you see that my explanation was actually not on target. <laughs> it, must have, it must have been some other one year position. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Mrs. Sapple, <laughs> and congratulations on your new granddaughter. Yes, congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Uh, any other questions, comments from down? No? All in favor of approval of the um, middle school social studies teacher for a one-year appointment as presented? Seven. Thank you, um, and welcome uh, to the school. Right. So uh, we have 8.4.2. We have a middle school music teacher. Um, we do. Um, 8.4.2, uh, middle school music teacher. Um, S Steve Bisop. That's pretty good. Uh, S Stephen Bisop is uh, nominated to fill this position. This is created by a rea realignment, um, which um, Mrs. Hathorne may wish to explain. Um, uh, Mr. Bisop. Uh, 
earned his bachelor's degree in music performance from the University of Michigan, his master's in music education from Oakland University in, in Rochester, Michigan. He's expected to receive his doctorate in music education in the near future. He's taught middle school music in Tokyo and in Rochester, Michigan, uh, and he's been a lecturer of music education at Oakland University and most recently at University of Southern Maine. We're delighted um, to recommend the appointment of Stephen Bisop as middle school music teacher. Okay. Move approval. Second. Question, comment. <coughs> yes, Mr. Chiazzo, down at the end there, please. Just, yeah, yeah, you're ready, Ms. Ms. Cathorn. <laughs> um, I just want to, again, point out the realignment portion was from the adjustments that we made to the positions earlier due to the budget, correct? That is correct. Okay, okay. thank you. Okay, thank you for the clarification from the finance end of it. Uh, all in favor of approval as presented for the middle school music teacher? Seven. Thank you and welcome aboard. Um, there um, is a spreadsheet with these other appointments. The first is item 8.4.3, high school department heads. And I can tell you what you will also be seeing on here. You can take this as a package or you can do it individually if you wish. 8.4.4 um, are the middle school um, positions. And that is also uh, the leadership positions, teacher leadership positions. Wentworth lead teachers is item 8.4.5. The primary school lead teachers uh, you'll find under item 8.4.6. And the consulting special ed um, that is K through eight um, uh, special ed, and that is uh, the last item, which is 8.4.7. These were ready to go, and that's why they were added um, uh, as uh, adjustments to this agenda. And we're happy to answer uh, questions. Um, and again, you can take them individually or as a package. The desire of the board this evening. Anyone? Move approval of. All the above. Do we want to take it as a package? I'm happy with that. Yeah. Certainly. Okay. All right. So we have a first on the floor there. Do we have a second to take it all as a package? Second. Okay. So I'll start off. I have two questions. Forgive me for my lack of knowledge in this particular area. Could you please explain to me what the position of chemical hygiene is mm -hmm. under the middle school? Well, it would probably be best to if um, ask, if you, want the, if you want the correct answer, we'll ask Mrs. Hathaway to step up here. And we appreciate her being here tonight. So I, I venture a guess. <laughs> You'd probably yeah, guess correctly. Um, this is a person that every year has to fill out paperwork for the state, has to um, take stock of the chemicals that we have in our labs, and it's quite a job, actually, every year. Okay. Has Matt. Would, would yes. this have anything to do with perhaps maybe making posters that are required by the state of any kind? Oh, he makes sure, he makes sure that everything is labeled, is labeled okay. and okay. Yeah, up to state right. mandates. Okay. And then um, my other question, if you'd like to remain in case Dr. Entwistle doesn't have I'm just going to defer to Mrs. Um, the scheduler, is that, and I, I took a wild stab at this, a scheduler to make the students' schedules? Yes, and yes, but because again, Power School hasn't been able to do that work for us because right. of the way we were organized. We're okay. going to hopefully move down that road, but right now we need a person to do okay. that work in the summer. All right, perfect. Just wanted the clarification. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Any other questions from anyone? Donna? Um, the, can, can we have a little explanation of the three uh, grant-funded positions? the special ed consulting teachers for the K-8 building? Um, well, they would be grant funded because they are paid under local entitle entitlement for special education. So that's a yearly thing that would happen. It's not a one-time grant. No. Correct. Is my understanding. Okay. So the school system doesn't pay anything for those? No, they come out of our local entitlement monies. Okay. But these are teachers, though, that are these are our, our, our teachers, teachers that are under our regular contract. So this is an additional the, something that they're doing. That's correct. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, I have a Kelly? question, just um, because I don't remember what the amount was last year for the middle school athletics and activities coordinator. With the elimination of seventh grade sports, is that stipend amount the same? I believe that's coming as a separate item. Is that not? 
No, it's not here. It's right here. It's right there. Oh, it is added. Okay. Yeah. I just okay, I don't know what it was last year, so I was just wondering if there's an an accounting for that because that was a cost saving measure to eliminate seventh grade sports. So I don't know if that stipend reflects a change. If I, don't I, know. If I well, I'll take a whack at it too. I, I understand <coughs> the, the 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 development of an intramural process as well That's is going right. to require a lot more time and effort and devotion. So that person has to have the skill sets and the compensation level to basically run the intramural program that will replace the existing sports program. Is that accurate? Okay. Yeah, that's what I was just wondering, if it was the same <laughs> or if it was different or... Yeah, it's different. It's a different it's design. Yeah, the, role, the roles and responsibilities are much more extensive this year than they have been in the past. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, the one open position for the phys ed at the high school, I know Dr. Cre uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Creech isn't here, but is that, that that will be eventually filled? Yes. That's, or is that open for? No, eventually will be. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Anyone else? Yes. Okay. I do have a question. What's the inquiry needed? <laughs> the, um, <Death>. Okay. <laughs> We should get our chair up there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is our new re reorganization. So the school is organized by grade level. That's the community leader. All right, so the community leader, uh, in the community there are three inquiry teams. So each inquiry team has a leader, and they facilitate some of the meetings that are required. They just keep changing the names. So there's on four. So there's basically four, three or four teachers. Most of them have four teachers. Most have for four. Mm -hmm. teams, yes. And one teaches ELA, one teaches math, one teaches science, social. one teaches social studies, with the exception of like one or two uh, inquiries. I think it was a sixth okay. grade, maybe. So it's like a correction meter for that. For that group of four. Oh, well, okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, this is name change. Thank you, Donna. And so. Um, can you explain just a little bit about what you mean by inquiry leader? What What is that person's role? What are they going to come up with? Well, the role is going to grow over time, but at this point they will be facilitating a meeting um, every five days, which consists of um, a lot of new language here. We need a word wall. But they're going, it will consist of organizing children for the RISE class every day E, which is a place for students to either get ex um, extra help or uh, extend their learning. So they'll organize that. They'll organize uh, curriculums that are integrated. So there's going to be an integrated approach. And down the road, each team will have an inquiry question that they will be researching and developing throughout the year. And there will be a fair type of activity for people to come and visit. Part of the PLT. Pardon? Part of the PLT. PLT it, is, it is very much like a PLT, but, but for our students. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Anybody else? That, that, that's in addition to the <coughs> responsibilities that the, that the teachers are in? Or are they mm -hmm. not doing PLT? They, they're, 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 they are still all in their regular P, uh, okay. professional learning teams. It is, uh, the inquiry is really something that's now carried from the teachers to the students, and the inquiry is really focused on project-based learning, which is more in line with common core standards, more in line with graduation and career focus in terms of, of uh, taking the learning and applying it in a project-based uh, format with, um, with the team. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor of approval as presented after explanation had been given. Seven. So moved. So <coughs> congratulations to all of you though. folks. Madam Chair? Yes. A question for the leadership team to be answered at a later date. Yes. With the reorganization of the middle school and its curriculum and its delivery of services, how is this going to impact what we are doing at the high school? And as I say, I'm not expecting right. an answer now, but because I think it will be involved in, and they need to be into this process uh, to see how it does evolve, evolve as, as Mrs. Hathorne said. But I think it's a topic that we need to address before the end of the year sometime. Mm -hmm. I, and we will, and we will do that, Ms. Perry. I think the short answer is it's going to raise the bar 
in terms of the expectations at the high school. Okay. All right. Anything else this evening? We have uh, somehow we missed our report out. Sorry. So I'm going to start down at this end with Jackie. Don't be packing up yet. Oh, I thought we were done. No. no. I'm looking here, I and I realize that I'm going to make an adjustment to the agenda, sort of a Too little late. off cuff, <laughs> sort of a little <laughs> off cuff, but we don't have our committee report. I think it was just presumed that since we're just starting that people hadn't had oh. the committees, but you could check. Does anybody have any committee report that they'd like to report out on? Jackie, thank you for rescuing me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will be attending the Maine School Board's Association uh, Executive Committee meeting on Saturday, and then, as you know, on the, the uh, 30th, we will be having uh, the Cumberland County Forum, uh, as we mentioned earlier, at, at the Gorham Middle School. And uh, for that session, I will be a spokesperson for the Maine School Boards Association. Uh, there will be a spokesperson for the Maine Superintendents Association. And there will be other other leaders there. Superintendents will be expected to to lead the discussion groups during the breakout sessions. Okay. All right. Are there any other committee reports? I mean, I don't know if anybody's had any activity going on. Mr. Chiazzo, of course. Um, I'm sorry. Last, but certainly never the least, the finance committee. Yeah. Um, we we did meet on the 27th and worked on the preliminary um, agenda items, which we saw in our, our workshop, or our, excuse me, our retreat today. Um, so that was a good strategic discussion. We also went over the year-end closeout stuff um, for the for last quarter, and um, we'll have a report out on that to the board very shortly. Um, on the positive side, there is a joint meeting. Um, we, we've been asked to um, come before the Town Council's Finance Committee on the 16th to present some responses to some questions that they had, and hopefully we'll, that will begin the process of working the two groups working together. So um, unfortunately, I will not be here for that meeting, so I will defer to my distinguished colleagues on the Finance Committee to update us as, as they see fit. We'll represent. No worries. Anything else? There's just um, there's a couple of sheets here. Um, one is the MS. Uh, Ms. Perry mentioned MSMA or um, MSBA. Uh, there, uh, you have an advanced copy of the dates for the conference um, and the um, and the speaker there. And I also included for you an article uh, that talks about pediatricians call for later school start times to combat sleep deprivation, specifically targeting high school and middle school. Students and um, this has um, got, gotten a lot of press. Uh, it's coming from the Academy of uh, Pediatricians, American Academy of Pediatricians, and um, I suspect that when we have our community dialogue in the spring, that this will be one of the topics. Chris, I did see a, a report or a news report about a, a high school, I believe, in North Carolina that had implemented this, and they saw a significant increase in their test scores as a result of it. And and certainly a greater report on focus of the kids in classes themselves. So, And better attendance. And better attendance as well, yeah. What was the difference in timing? Uh, I believe it was a one hour later start, if I recall. So oh, then there was a letter to the editor in the morning paper that said send them to bed earlier. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> it's, about, it's about circadian rhythms. It's yeah. <laughs> So did they, <laughs> just a question in case the article did say this, I'd like to know, did it say how they adjusted all the other schools? Because if suddenly now your high school's starting at 8.30, swap with your Yeah, well, that was, that was, it, it, well, it was okay. within the school district itself, it was, it was a, a, a switch out for transportation purposes. It looked right. fairly seamless. The challenge was after school activities. Mm -hmm. So sporting events, things like that that happen typically start at start times were very much compressed now the time to get out of school to the time those events started. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, nothing is impossible. I think it's something that worth looking at if the benefits in academics and test scores outweigh the, mm -hmm. the, the inconveniences, then certainly something we might want to look at. Okay, perfect. All right, yes, down at the end there by Jackie L. Oh. No. Okay. I, I oh, Jane. To, yeah. Sorry. I just want to say something before we adjourn. Um, you know, I, I feel that particularly exciting to today because 
I went to the new school, <laughs> and I uh, begin of the school year, and I see how beautiful that is. I think that's a, uh, it's a, such a positive addition to our tongue, and I think uh, you know. I hope everybody in the town realize that, and uh, you know, share the, the excitement like I am feeling today. And also, I see the middle school change into this whole new structure. I'm very excited about that. I think it's a lot of good things uh, coming, and I feel like um, you know, this is let's keep this is exciting and a vibrant um, environment. And I keep the we hope this school year keeps. The, you know, everybody keep this energy going and uh, um, build m more goodwill with the community. And I hope, you know, I'm really excited about this, this new start. Perfect. I will say one other thing, and then I'll go to Donna or mm -hmm. Jackie, whoever was waiting. Um, I do want to mention that at the new school at Wentworth, there will be an open house and ribbon cutting for uh, the public in October sometime in October after the parking lot is completed. So until then, um, there's still some logistic issues uh, with parking situations. So we're, we're holding off until it's all finished. <laughs> okay. So Jackie and then Donna. I just want to uh, tell the public that I sent an email on Tuesday afternoon to Todd Jepsum and superintendent and assistant superintendent and members of the school board, but I was asking Mr. Jepson, was, was the air conditioning on and, and working well at the Wentworth School? Because if we will all recall, it was about four years ago this time that the kickoff for Wentworth got started because it was so darn hot that the children were becoming ill. And the response, of course, was it was on and working extremely well. And thank goodness for that, and thank goodness to the town of Scarborough and its citizens for helping us build that school. Thank you. Donna? Well, and I just had a few thank yous as well. Um, um, someone who's not here tonight, Ann Mary Dexter, who worked for many, many years attempting to get a new school in the three to five grade level in this town. And uh, she should be celebrating because this is a wonderful time. Um, many thanks to her as well. Then just to um, Ms. Perry, Ms. Murphy, Mrs. Sizemore, Mrs. Massengill, the negotiations with the support staff and the bus drivers. A lot of people might think, meh, three or four meetings, what's that? Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about 50, meetings or more, now you're talking about hours and hours and hours that go into negotiations. This is not a simple discussion that's over with briefly. And so I applaud you and thank you for all your hours and your hard work. And finally, to the many teachers who worked in our schools throughout the Labor Day weekend, Saturday, Sunday, all day Monday, I know who you are. <laughs> I know it's what you do. We have them on camera. <laughs> and, and I know it's your dedication that brings you in on those unpaid hours once again. Thank you for all of that work. Absolutely well said. Yes. Thank you, thank you. All right. Anything else? Then the will of the board this evening. Anyone? Move to adjourn. Second, we go. <laughs> All in favor of adjourning? Seven. Meetings adjourned. Thank you very much.